This video is going to cover section 12.3, probability and odds. So this is a, a subject that many of you are familiar with. Um, and when they ask, you know, what are the chances of this happening? That's pretty much probability. Um, and some of it, you can also think of it in terms of odds for certain problems, okay? So before we do that, let's go ahead and define this officially. We have that the likelihood that an event will occur is called probability. So this is our definition of probability. That's a horrible line. Let me redo that. Okay, um, the event that something is very unlikely is close to zero. So, for instance, the probability that certain uh, football professional teams will get the Super Bowl is is close to zero based on past events, and that would actually be uh, something called it, um, empirical probability. But we'll get to that in a bit. Um, the event that something is likely is close to one, so it's kind of like a hundred percent. So the closer to one, the, the better your chances are, okay? Closer to zero, the worse your chances are. So let's go ahead and look at some more examples here, okay? We have the probability of an event. So for an experiment with sample space S of equally likely outcomes, the probability P of E, P of E of an event is given by the following. P of E is equal to N of E over N of S where N of E is the number of elements in E, so the number of times that that event's going to happen, that could happen over the total number of elements in the sample space, over the total elements that we have available, okay? So let's go ahead and go right into an example. This one says, what is the probability of landing on an even number, okay, of dots after rolling one dice? Uh, I guess it should be a die, but just one of them, okay? Assuming it has the six sides. So an even number would be uh, 2, 4, 6, correct? And that's a total. So let's go ahead and put that. We know that 2, 4, and 6 are all of our even numbers, okay? So this would kind of be our, our E here, the number of elements in E, 2, 4, and 6. And then the total number of elements would be S, the sample space. So that would be everything, 1, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so if you see, we all we have to do is count the number of elements in E and the number of elements in the total space and divide them. So it looks like our P of E, okay, would be equal to N of E, which would be this up here. So three out of six, which is just a half. And of course, this might seem a bit common sense. I mean, there's an, there's three and three, so it's half and, you know, but this is a more formal way of doing this, okay? So just kind of an example to show you so when you get to the more difficult problems, you know how to lay that out, okay? So let's go ahead and look at another example. This one has actually worked out for you. I'm going to show you it. I'm going to explain it the way it is and also another way to do it. So we have a fair coin. Um, one for which it is equally likely that heads or tails will result from a single toss, and it's tossed three times. So they want to know what is the probability that two heads and one tail are tossed. So we have the, the following sample space, okay? We can have uh, that all of them come out as heads. We can have heads, heads, tail, heads, tail, heads, heads, tail, 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 heads, heads, tail, heads, tails, tail, tail, heads, and tail, tail, tail. So these are all the possible um, combinations that we have that we can get after tossing a coin three times. This, this is the sample space we have, okay? The elements that we want is two heads and one tail. So that happens right here, um, right here, and it looks like right here. So we have a total of three and those are right here as well. So that would be our E. And then we just divide them. So we have the three and the eight, three divided by eight is three eighths. So this is three-eighths probability for this. this example. We have that two fair dice are tossed. What is the probability that their sum is seven? So in a, pr in a prior, I'm going to put prior because I'm not going to do this. The sample space is actually pretty big. The sample space was, it had 36 elements. So the cardinality of this was 36, okay? Where we had, I remember we had like a, I think you had like a, the red die, the red dice over here, and then the green dice over here. And then we had all these combinations, okay? And it came out to 36. So 
I'm not going to do that whole thing because, like I said, it's going it, to that would take quite a while. Um, but if if you have more questions about this, let me know, and I can tell you where to find the chart because we did we did cover it before. But there were 36 elements in that sample space. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and notate that. So I should know that n of s is 36, which I need for the bottom because remember this is going to be n of s, and then the top is N of E. So we need to find E. So I'm going to go ahead and do E. E is the sample space for the the, the event happening that the sum is 7. So for 7, I could get a dice that has 1, and the other one could have 6. Right? And that adds up to 7. Okay? I can also get backwards, I can get the first dice to have six and the second one to have one. Okay, I can get two and five. And likewise, five and two. I can get three and four. And likewise, four and three. Okay, so it looks like I have one, two, three, four, five, six elements on the top and 36 on the total space, which reduces down to one six. So the probability of this of this uh, problem is one over six. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and talk about. Oh, let me just get this part first. Experimental probability versus theoretical probability. Okay. So the probability that we've been talking about so far would be theoretical. This is saying, well, theoretically, you know, if everything is even and everything lands evenly all the time, um, it's perfectly balanced, then this is what you would get, this one, okay? This is what um, we would like to have in most of our situations so that things are as fair as possible, okay? Experimental probability, also known as empirical okay, probability, is it's a probability that actually is based on data. So let's say you actually do roll the dice this many times or whatever, and you find that, you know, evens came out more than odds, that would be your experimental probability. So this one is actually used most uh, more, I want to say, I mean, I'm not, I'm not a science person, but I would say when you're trying to make a hypothesis, you use the data that you already have and say, well, based on my, my, my data, I'm going to say that the probability of this happening is this, and you go with the favorable odds, okay? So this one, the formula is uh, n of e. So, well, let's not do that color. Let's do this one. Okay. So, the number of times the events occur. So, it's kind of like the one we had before. Okay. And then the total number of trials, the number of times that we did, we tried the experiments. Okay. Ver versus what we already had over here. Remember, this was n of e over n of s. Okay. So, with that in mind, I have some information for you on this example here. We have a chart here of voters at, at different ages and who they and what party they voted for. So for instance, um, in the age group 18 through 28, 205 voted Republican, 432 voted Democrat, 98 voted independent, 112 did other, and the total of this is 847. So there was a total of 847 voters that were 18 through 28, okay? So let's go ahead and see if we can answer a question. It says, if a voter was selected at random, so that means that any of these guys, okay, what is the probability that he, that she or he were independent? So independent would be this column right here, okay? And I don't really care about the ages. I just want to know what are the chances that this person was independent? Well, you can see that my total number of independent people were 499. So that would be the number of times that the event occurred. 499 people voted independent. Okay. Um, so that's this part right here. The, let me scroll up a bit. That's this part right here. The number of times the event occurs. The total number of trials would be, well, the total amount of times that people voted. So in this case, the total would be this number over here, 3228. Okay, and then we just divide that. So let me go ahead and do that real quick. 
see, and I'm getting approximately 0.14. So this is approximately 0.1, I'm sorry, not 1, 4, 1, 5. 0.15, or if you want to do percents, you can also say it's about 15%. So if we were to pick a random voter here and say, I'm just going to, you know, pull that out of a hat or whatever, or a ballot box, I guess would be more um, appropriate. We would say there's a 15% chance that that voter is an, ind is an independent, that they claim themselves to be independent. Okay, and that's, that's how this probability works, where you have data and you're using that data to determine what the probability is of a certain event. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a few more examples. This one, this video won't be that much longer. Okay, so another example of empirical or experimental probability is with something called a Punit square. I'm hope, hopefully I'm saying that right. Like I said, I'm not really a science person, but you might have seen this in the biology class at some point, where you have uh, genotypes of, of parents. So um, you have the parent that has, you know, the two recessive traits. Recessive is the lower case, so that would be these two right here. And then you have the parent that has one of each. So the dominant trait would be the capital. So this one, and then this, per this, this parent also has a recessive trait. Okay, so the way they work is you match them up. So I would say, okay, well, it looks like if I match these two up, then I have this chance of happening if I match up the other two, then I have two little R's and so forth. Okay, so if I was if I were to ask in this example, what is the probability? So let me go ahead and put that probability. I can't spell probability. Okay, of this of these parents uh, children of of a child having probability of we'll say. Um, R, R, capital R, little R. Okay. Well, I mean, you would say, well, I know that there's two of those. See, there's two of them right here. So I have two possible events. Okay. And then there was four trials because it's one, two, three, four. There's four squares here. Two out of four, which is a half. So the probability that the child will receive this gene is a half. So it's a, you know, a half, half percent, 50%. Okay, not half percent, fifty percent. Okay. All right, let's try another one just to see kind of how this works with actual traits. So in this one, let's say we're defining the little t to be short, and then if it's combined with a big T, it's gonna be tall. So you can see that there's more tall than short here. So let's say we want to know what's the probability, probability, probability. I just can't spell this today. Prob it should be a B. Okay, well, you get the idea. Probability of being tall. And why not? Let's ask the probability of being short. Okay, so the probability of being tall, it looks like anything that has a capital T makes you tall. So that would be one, two, three. So it would be three times. And it looks like we have four squares. So it's three fourths probability. Or if you want to do percentages, you can say, well, that's 75%. Because three quarters is 75%. Okay. So either one is fine. I'll accept both. Or even the decimal, 0.75. Okay. The probability of being short is going to be the opposite, right? So it's the one that has both little t's, which is this one right here. So it looks like it's just going to be 1 out of 4, or 0.25, or 25%, which is probably the gene that I ended up with. Okay. All right. So that's how these work. Okay. We're going to move on to one more definition and then a couple of examples with it. Um, we have the odds of an event. So if you hear people say, well, what are the odds of this? What are the odds of that? When you're talking about odds, you're going to be talking about favorable outcomes versus unfavorable outcomes. So a good example of this is football, because that's what a lot of people like to watch. What are the odds of this team winning against this team? Um, well, it's two to one or two to five or whatever, or whatever. But that's that's how we uh, that's how we use this kind of stuff. So the formulas for this, the odds in favor would be the number of favorable on the top over the number of unfavorable on the bottom. The odds against are going to be swapped. So we just kind of switch them. 
okay? So for instance, if you were to say, well, the odds of, of that team winning is two to one, you would say, well, the odds of, of, uh, of, them lose, of the other team, I'm sorry, the team losing would be one to two. You just kind of switch it, okay? So let's see, we have an example here, not with football, but with our same example that we saw before with the sum of seven, okay? So it said, what are the odds of favor of rolling a sum of seven? So we have the outcomes here and they went ahead and drew the dice. I didn't do that. So this is that one, six that we did, two, five, three, four. I'm just putting the number of dots and then we have it backwards, four, three. I guess this would be more official if I put them in parentheses, okay? Um, five, two, and six, one. So they listed them a little bit differently. It's, it's still, notice that it's still six outcomes. So we have six favorable outcomes, okay? So the unfavorable outcomes would be whatever is left over. So the unfavorable outcomes are the remaining 30 possibilities. Why 30? Well, because there was 36 to begin with. Remember we said there's 36 in the whole sample space. So if you subtract six, you end up with 30. So when we go ahead and plug all this in, and it, and it actually tells us that right here. I didn't read that, but it tells us right there. So the odds in favor of E would be the number of favorable outcomes, which is that six. So there's my six. And then the number of unfavorable would be 30. So therefore the odds are going to be one to five. One over five, which translates to one to five. And if I wanted to go backwards, the odds against E would be backwards. It would be five to one. So I'm just kind of put that here against E would be five to one, just so we know, okay? Let's try one more example and that'll be it for this uh, video here. If a card is randomly pulled from a standard deck of playing cards, what are the odds in favor of pulling a heart? So standard deck of cards has 52 cards. We're not kind of the jokers, okay? And we know that, let's go ahead and use this color for the hearts. Well, we know that there's four different, um, I guess little, I don't know what they're called, but they're the spades, the hearts, the clovers, and the diamonds, okay? So there's four different uh, symbols. So if we divide 52 by four, we get 13. So there's 13 hearts, okay? Uh, uh, with different numbers or, you know, king, jacks, and queens. So that means that for the top part, okay, we have 13. Because that's the favorable, that's what we want, okay? For the bottom, it's the unfavorable. So to find the, the, the unfavorable, we would have to subtract this, okay? We would do 52 minus 32, which I believe is 39, and that would be on the bottom. And of course, this we can reduce because 13 over 39 reduces by three. I'm sorry, not by three, by 13. So it's one over three. So it looks like the, the odds of pulling a heart are going to be one to three. And this is how we write this one. If you leave it like this, it's, I guess it's okay, but I, I probably won't give you, I'll, I'll take off one point. So go ahead and make sure we do write this like this for odds. We write it this way, okay? Yeah, that's that's pretty much it, guys. Um, I don't have anything else. If you have any questions, as always, let me know.